are in a seated meditation today. So come to a comfortable seat and if you have a pillow or a block or anything, you can sit up on that to just get a little bit of height and get the hips a little bit higher than the knees. And then you can just rest your hands wherever is most comfortable. So maybe palms face down if you need a little bit more grounding. Or face up if you want a little bit more receiving energy. And then just get all the wiggles out. Make any last minute adjustments that you might need so that you can just fully settle into stillness here. And just start to observe the breath. Noticing if you tend to favor the inhale or the exhale, meaning one half might be a little bit shorter than the other. Through cultivating a sense of awareness, starting to find a little bit more equanimity to both halves of the breath. So finding balance here in the breath is just one of the many ways that we can practice finding more balance in our yoga practice. And then as you breathe, you might want to create a little bit more space in the lungs to the breath by adjusting your posture. So start to lift up a little bit more through the crown of the head. Maybe even imagining a long line of energy coming down from the center of the universe to the crown of the head, to the heart space, to the pelvic floor. straight through the ground, all the way to the core of the earth. If you notice your shoulders rising with the breath, see if you can send the breath even further down into the lungs so that you feel the belly expanding outwards. And the shoulders can be relaxed. We'll take three rounds of breath together. We'll start with the exhale. So exhale all the air out of the lungs. Take a deep breath in, filling through the belly, the chest, the throat. Then hold in at the top. And find an open mouth, exhale. And another round, inhale, fill up. Belly, chest, throat. Hold at the top. And then exhale, let everything go. And last time, inhale, feel the lower back and belly expanding. All sides of the ribs expanding outward. Final sip of air into the throat space. Hold at the top. Open mouth, exhale. And bring your hands together at heart center, Atman Anjali Mudra. Bow the chin towards the heart. 
And if you'd like to set an intention for your class today, you can set one here. Maybe it's something that you need to feel more grounded this evening. Or maybe it's an intention so that you can show up for someone else. So let it be something authentic to you in this moment, in this class. We'll all seal in our intentions with the breath together. Exhale all the air from the lungs. Deep breath in. Audible exhale. And see how the lips just start to find a breath in and out of the nose. And if you'd like to start to warm the body, you can take ujjayi pranayama, finding a slight constriction in the back of the throat. But for this practice this evening, if you just want to keep the breath natural, moving in and out of the nose, that's also fine. Good. So gently blink the eyes open and we're just going to start warming up the spine and back of the side body stretch. So you're gonna go ahead and take your left arm, reach it up overhead, flip the palm to face backward, and then you'll bend the elbow and grab it with the right hand. So you're taking a half gomo cross in the arm. From here, the low ribs are probably splaying out. So draw them into the back, take a deep breath in. And then exhale, find a side body stretch to the right. Then think about rooting down through that left sit bone as you stretch over to the right. If you want to take this a little deeper, you can start to press the back of the head into the arm and roll the heart open just slightly. Good. Deep breath in, feel some space opening up between each rib bone. And big exhale. And you're going to keep the side body stretch. So you're going to bring your right hand to the right cheekbone or jawline and extend the left fingertips out to the left. See if you can relax the shoulders down the back. If you want to take this deeper, just flex the left hand so that the heel of the hand is reaching down towards the earth. A deep breath in. Big exhale. And then gently come back up the center and we'll take the other side. So you'll inhale, bring the right arm up high, flip the palm to face back. And then you're going to bend at the elbow, capturing it with the left hand and slide it down the back. So again, the ribs are probably splaying outward. So knit them together, lengthen through the spine as you breathe in. And then as you exhale, find a side body stretch to the left. Again, your right sitting bone might want to lift off the mat. So see if you can root it downwards. Let it feel weighted. Right, if you want to take this deeper, start to press the back of the head into the arm and maybe roll the heart open just gently. It's really subtle. Last breath here, creating some space between the ribs. And then as you exhale, you'll just bring the right hand down towards the mat, left hand captures the right cheekbone or jawline. You know, keep moving further into this neck stretch. And again, the deeper option is flexing the right hand here. And you might feel this a little bit in the nerves. We have tight upper back or arm muscles, so just take deep breaths. Right, and then gently release. Good. So this class is pretty gentle, but I did want to start with a little bit of uh, core activation. So we're just going to do two rounds of boat pose and um, some chest and shoulder openers. So we're going to start in boat. You can grab underneath the thighs and you can use your arm strength to find more length through the spine. Lift the chest higher and then lift the shins. Now I like to check back in, use my arms to realign the spine, shoulders stacking over hips, 
And then maybe you'll decide to release the hands or straighten the legs. Good, we'll hold for four. Deep breath in for three. Big exhale for two. And one. You're gonna plant the feet down. Bring your hands behind the sitting bones. And then inhale, lift the hips, reverse tabletop. So if it feels okay, you can let the head fall back. If that feels uncomfortable or it makes you a little dizzy, just keep the neck long and gaze down the nose. But see if you can breathe all the way into the chest, the shoulders, lift the heart a little bit higher, the sternum towards the sky. And then exhale, lower the hips. We'll do one more round. So we'll set up for boat, grab underneath the thighs, lift the shins, and then maybe you'll release the arms or straighten the legs. We'll take three breaths, inhale. Exhale, relax shoulders. Two more, inhale. Exhale. Trying to find a smooth breath, inhale here. Exhale, you'll either plant the feet, or this time if you wanna take reverse plank, you'll extend the legs. And then inhale, lift the hips. Now, if you're taking reverse plank, really ground down through the big toe ball mound so that you feel the inner thighs rolling down as you lift the hips up. A deep breath in. Really activate through the palms of the hands, breathe out. One more, inhale. And then exhale, lower down. Okay, from here, you're just gonna cross the ankles and come to your tabletop position on all fours. So spread the fingers nice and wide. We're gonna get into the spine even more here by taking some cat cows. So as you inhale, drop the belly, lift through the heart, cow pose. Good, exhale, start to round and curl through the spine, drawing navel up and in, cat. Good, two more rounds, inhale, smiling through the collarbones. And exhale, lengthening tailbone down towards the mat. Good, last one, inhale here. And exhale, really press space between the shoulder blades. Good, and then from here, find a neutral spine, and in your tabletop, you're actually gonna walk your hands a palm for it forward, and we're gonna take this cat cow into a cobra child's pose. So you're gonna inhale, roll the hips and heart forward and find cobra, a little bend in the elbows. And then the exhale, you're gonna press through cat before entering your child's pose. So really moving with the breath like a wave, you'll inhale, roll forward, Lower the hips, lift the heart, shoulders roll back. Exhale, hips to heels, childs. And two more, inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. Exhale. Right, and then inhale, come back to your tabletop. Keep the hands about a palm print forward in space, even here. And then you're just gonna tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. And maybe you've done a bunch of Zoom yoga classes today and you just wanna settle in right away. But if this is your first down dog and you wanna find some movement, you can pedal out the dogs or do the dogs, the dog, or do any other organic movement that feels right to you. Just make sure you're staying connected to the breath, being really aware of the body, the thoughts. And when you eventually settle in, you might decide you wanna bend the knees a little bit. Just lift the tailbone an inch higher, finding length through the spine. Then keeping all that length, maybe you'll start to draw the heels back down towards the mat. Good, really ground down and integrate all 10 knuckles into the mat. 
And imagine your armpits had eyeballs. You're trying to roll them in to stare at one another. So they're moving away from the ears. So low ribs dip up and in, deep breath in. Good, as you exhale, contract through the fronts of the thighs. Another round, inhale, really active down dog. Exhale. The last one here, inhale. And then exhale, gaze back and start to walk the hands backwards and space towards the back of the mat. Feet are about hips with distance apart. And then you're gonna fold with a little bend in the knees. And interlace all 10 fingers behind the base of the skull at the neck. Elbows draw in. And then you can just sway side to side. Imagining that your brain was super heavy and weighted in your skull. So you're just letting that all release with gravity down towards the mat. Maybe even closing the eyes. And start to notice the shifting of weight that's happening between both feet. Just like a pendulum starting to slow down. Start to find equal weight between both feet. And keeping that soft bend of the knees and your arms and hands where they are. You're gonna start to round up, keeping the chin tucked into the chest, moving as slow as you can. Stacking one vertebra on top of the next. Chin stays into the chest for the last moment. When the crown of the head lifts, you're gonna open the elbows and lift the head up from the back of the neck. Lift the sternum towards the sky. Maybe the gaze lifts. And as you exhale, find a side body stretch to the right, keeping the hands where they are. Inhale back to center. And exhale over to the left. So keeping that length in the neck. Good. Inhale back through center. But as you exhale, elbows draw in, chin comes to heart. Bend the knees slightly and start to curl back down the same way you came up. And eventually letting the fingertips reach the mat. You'll inhale, find a halfway lift. And exhale, fold. This time, sweep the arms out to the side. Inhale, arms reach overhead, high prayer. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, sweep the arms out to the side as you fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, walk your hands back out long, downward facing dog. Good, two deep breaths here, inhale. Exhale, draw the backs of the calves down away from the backs of the knees. Good, one more, inhale. And exhale, empty out. But this time, inhale, start to roll forward, leading with the back of the heart. Good, keep the thighs contracting, drawing the knees up towards the hips. Deep breath in. And exhale, lower all the way down to the belly. Good, untuck the toes, bring them together to touch. Inhale, Bhujangasana, baby cobra. So my chin stays micro-tucked. We're lengthening the back of the neck. Maybe you'll hover the hands over the mat, really engaging through the muscles supporting the spine. One more deep breath in. And exhale, release forehead to mat. Good. Tuck the toes, firm the thighs. Two options, either tabletop or as you inhale, Everything lifts up into high plank. And exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Deep breath in. Big exhale. Another round. Inhale, fill up all the way. 
Equal length exhale, empty out all the way. Last time here, inhale. And exhale, let it go. And on your next inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. And as you exhale, step, maybe hop to the top. If you're stepping, maybe try to keep your hands flat on the ground. Good. Inhale, rise up, Urdhva Hasasana. And exhale, palms by the side, mountain pose, Tadasana. Rolling the shoulder blades back. Good. Next inhale, sit the butt back, reach the arms forward, Utkatasana, chair pose. But as you find a little lift through the heart, still find a little tuck through the tailbone down towards the mat. And make sure you can see all 10 toes, deep breath in. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, step the left leg back, finding a runner's lunge. It's a come up onto your fingertips, lift the torso off of that right thigh. Hug the right hip crease back. And exhale, lower the left knee down, untucking the back toes. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, low lunge. So it's less about how low you sink into the lunge. You can actually get a deeper stretch by coming out a little, lengthening the tailbone down, and then lunging deeper. Good. You're going to grab opposite elbows with your hands. And start to reach the shoulders away from one another, pulling the elbows away from each other. A deep breath in, maybe lifting the gaze. Good, and then as you exhale, Ardha Hanumanasana half splits. So folding over that right thigh. Good, you can adjust the intensity. If your hips are a little further back, it's a little more mild. If they're a little bit further forward, it's a little more intense. Good, inhale, halfway lift, roll the upper inner thighs back. And exhale, fold, bringing the ribs a little bit further down the leg if you can. Good, as you inhale, you'll re-bend the bottom, the front knee. Reach up and back, a little more back bend this time. And exhale, plant the palms, step back, high plank. Deep breath in. As you exhale, knees to the mat, chest to the mat, chin to the mat. Slide the heart through. Inhale, Bhujangasana. And exhale, forehead releases. Tuck the toes as you inhale, high plank or tabletop. And exhale, down dog. Deep breath in. Big exhale. Really ground yourself here. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale, drawing awareness back to the body. Exhale. On your next inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. And as you exhale, step or hop to the top. Good. Inhale, rise up, Urdhva Hasasana, high prayer. Exhale, palms by the side, mountain pose, Tadasana. Good. Inhale, sit the butt back, one breath, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, step the right leg back, runner's lunge. So again, think about lifting the torso off of the left thigh, even if you have to have your hands on blocks. And then exhale, lower the back knee down, untuck the toes. Inhale, Anjaneyasana. So again, it's not about how much you sink into the joints and bones here. You can actually get a more effective stretch, even though it doesn't look as deep by tucking the tailbone under, lifting up through that front of the right thigh. Good. From here, you're gonna bring the opposite arm in front, capture the opposite elbows. And then inhale, reach the shoulder blades 
down from the ears away from one another as you draw the elbows apart. Maybe lift through the heart and the gaze. One more deep breath in. And then exhale, shift the hips back. Ardha Hanumanasana half split. So just take a moment here to settle in. Maybe making any adjustments you might need to. And then when you're ready, you'll inhale, take a halfway lift, rolling the upper inner thighs back and the heart reaches forward. As you exhale, fold and soften. Chin to chest. Good, next inhale, you'll rebend the left knee and reach up and back, maybe a little more back bend here, like reaching up and over something. And then exhale, plant the palms, step back, high plank. Try not to hike the hips up as you step back into plank. Deep breath in. And exhale, knees to the mat, chest to the mat, chin to the mat. Slide the heart forward. Inhale, Bhujangasana. And exhale, forehead releases. Good, slide the hands further forward in space, forearms on the mat. Elbows by your low ribs. Inhale, Sphinx Pose. So try not to just drop the low ribs down into the mat. You're gonna traction the forearms back, reach the heart forward and then suck the low ribs up and in so the low back feels supported here. And from here, you'll turn your left hand in. And if you'd like, you can reach back to the top of the right foot and just draw it in towards the glue. So if you're feeling really mobile, this doesn't bother your knee. You can flip the hand and bring the heel down towards the glute. Just listen in, your knees are fairly wise. So if they tell you to ease out, just listen to their wisdom. <laughs> and gently release. And then you'll replace the right, the left forearm with the right. And then maybe reach back, capturing the top of the left foot, maybe drawing it in or flipping the palm face down. You might notice a big difference. For me, this side feels completely different than the other side. So just take that in as information. Good, gently release. Good. And then come back to your Sphinx pose, bringing your wrists in front of your elbows. You're gonna tuck the toes, take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, lift everything up, forearm plank. Okay, now you can stay here, just working on pressing the outer edge of the elbows, inner edge of the wrist down into the mat. If you wanna take dolphin, you can start to walk the toes in. Trying to keep the gaze between the wrists, try not to collapse in the shoulders, lift up. And just try to find a little more length through the hamstrings here. Three breaths, inhale, exhale. Good, two more, inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale here. And then as you exhale, you'll make your way back to down dog, maybe trying to get both elbows up at the same time or one at a time. We're building a little heat here before we move into the yin portion of class. A deep breath in. Big exhale. Good, on your next inhale, you'll go ahead and gaze forward. Then exhale, step or hop to the top of the mat. Inhale, rise up, Urdhva Hasasana. And exhale, hands back to heart center. And so from here, you're gonna come to the ball of the left foot, turn the knee out using those adducting muscles or abducting muscles. And then you're gonna bring the sole of your foot to your calf or your inner thigh, finding tree pose. Now just make sure to avoid the knee joint here if you're not pressing the foot into the knee. 
You'll focus your drift to your gaze at one point. I like to have my hands at hips or heart center to start. If you feel like you're gonna fall rather than trying to catch the air, just press your hands back into that central point even more so you're retraining the mind that when you start to feel unstable, you hug everything back into a center line of gravity. Now, if you feel pretty good and you wanna take this a little bit higher, you can bring the arms up to the sky. Maybe the gaze will lift. So keep pressing foot into thigh, thigh into foot, trying to level out the hips. Good, deep breath in. Good, as you exhale, you're gonna bend the right knee. Keep this left leg turned out and start to step back into a warrior one stance. So the right hip still stays square, the left hip turns out slightly. So the foot's at a 45 degree angle. And you can adjust once you land. You wanna to try to get this front shin perpendicular to the mat. We'll inhale, reach the arms up. Good, as you exhale, cactus the arms, find a little lift through the sternum. It, it helps to try to flex your toes towards your shins here to find the leg activation. Good. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, you're gonna use the internal and external obliques to turn to the right. So you're finding a very activated twist here, using your muscles to find that range of motion. Good, inhale, back to your center. Lift through the heart. And then as you exhale, find warrior two. So you might need to adjust the feet. Again, you want that front chin perpendicular to the mat. So if you need to step the back foot in, you can. Shoulders are over the hips. Maybe the gaze is over the horizon of the front fingertips. See if you can steady the breath. Good, deep breath in. Big exhale. Good, bring the hands behind you as you breathe in, interlacing the fingers. And then draw the knuckles towards the right thigh as you breathe out. If this doesn't work for you, you can just stay in warrior two. Good, we'll take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, find reverse warrior. So if you're in warrior two, just a natural reverse warrior, or if you're in this clasp, press the hands into the top of the right thigh and reach back. Your gaze can be up, or if that strains your neck, just gaze down towards the back foot. We wanna try to increase the angle between our hip and thigh. And on your next inhale, come back, warrior two, arms extend. And then as you exhale, we'll move into side angle. So I like to start with my right elbow on my thigh. And I like to reach my arm forward. So my palm is facing towards my body. And I'm trying to get my pinky finger to be the farthest finger forward. So my shoulder's externally rotating in the socket. Now, if you want to take the right arm further down, you can open up the arm. If you have a block or a can, you can place your hand on that. If you do reach all the way to the ground, you're gonna to wanna to widen your stance so you don't collapse in the right side. Good. Feel free to take any other variations. We'll hold for two more breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe barreling the heart open, deep breath in. Exhale. Good. Inhale. Straighten the front leg. Reverse triangle. Give the front leg a little relief. And then as you exhale, windmill the arms down. Step back. You can take knees, chest, chin, or maybe this time, Chaturanga Dandasana, lowering halfway. Inhaling, upward facing dog, lifting the knees off the mat. And exhale, down dog. Let's do three open mouth breaths. Inhale here. Big exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Big breath. And exhale. Let it go. 
Good. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. And exhale, step or hop to the top. And moving with the breath. Inhale, rise up. Urdhva Hasasana. And exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. And inhale, rise back up once again. Arms reach overhead. This time, exhale, hands to heart center. So we're gonna take the same thing, tree pose. You're gonna come to the ball of the right foot, turn the knee out. And then maybe you'll start to lift the foot to the calf. Or maybe you'll lift the foot all the way to the left inner thigh, just avoiding that knee joint. So keep your drishti or gaze at one point. See if you can first find that balance in both halves of the breath before even seeking out that balance in the physical body. And then maybe if you feel pretty comfortable and you wanna reach the arms up, maybe even the gaze, and start to lift the gaze. So if you're holding onto the mat with this left toe, see if you can relax the toes and rather contract the left thigh. Good, one more deep breath in. And then as you exhale, start to bend the left knee and try to gently step that right leg back into warrior one. So the front hip is still pointing forward, back leg is slightly turned out. And then you might need to make some adjustments once you get there. And you want to keep the front shin as perpendicular to the mat as possible. We'll inhale, reach arms up overhead. Exhale, cactus the arms, lift the sternum higher. A deep breath in. And then exhale, using the obliques, start to twist left. You'll feel that left hip nudging back, right hip reaching forward. And if you start to roll in on the back foot, Try to flex the toes towards the shin so you feel the arches of the feet lifting. Good, inhale back to center. And then exhale, open up. Fear of a in the two. So you might need to shuffle the feet again. Shoulders are over the hips, front knee over the ankle. And if you wanna track your gaze over the left fingers, you can. Good, deep breath in. Big exhale. Good, so we're gonna take reverse warrior again. You can take the traditional variation, or if you are interlacing your hands again, take the opposite pinky finger on the bottom, and you'll bring the hands on top of the left thigh. As you inhale, press into the thigh and reach back. Your gaze can be up if that bothers your neck. Feel free to gaze down at the back foot as you lunge deeper. So again, we're trying to increase the angle between the hip and the thigh. Good. Deep breath in. Big exhale. And we'll inhale back, warrior two. And then exhale, side angle. So again, I like to start with my elbow on my thigh. And if I'm taking this into extended side angle, I'll reach my arm forward. My palm is facing towards the body. And I'm trying to get my pinky finger the furthest forward. So my shoulder's externally rotating in the socket. And then my ribs might barrel open. You can reach your hand towards the mat or a block if you like. Again though, if you're gonna bring your hand all the way to the ground, you need to widen the stance so you don't collapse into the left side. Two more breaths, inhale. Exhale. One more, inhale, and exhale. And on your next inhale, reverse your triangle, straighten the front leg. And exhale, windmill the arms down. Step back, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing dog. Good. three active breaths, inhale through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. 
few more inhale exhale last one and exhale let something go as you inhale we'll roll forward to our high point and then lower all the way down to the belly so we're just going to do a few more spinal openers before we go into more of a yin practice and the first one's going to be locust pose you can have your palms face up by the sides or i like to take a little bound locust variation so yogi's choice if you're taking the bind you can interlace your fingers at your sacrum forehead comes down and you're going to start by rolling the shoulders back off of the mat bring the big toes to touch and then as you inhale lift the heart lift the legs reach the knuckles back a lot of times we like to rest our hands on our butt see if we can lift it up good chin is micro tucked remembering the cervical spine the next part of the entire spine one more deep breath in and then as you exhale bring your right ear to the mat palms face up by your sides and just wiggle the hips side to side. Take some deep belly breaths here. Seeing if you can notice the heart rate. And start to consciously slow it down with the breath. And gently bring the forehead back to center. You can take Locust again, if you want to take floor bow, you're going to bend the back knees. So down your asana, you're going to reach the palms back. My palms are going to face each other. It's hard to see with this light, but the palms are facing each other. You're going to grab the outsides of the feet. I'm going to walk my knees together. And then I'm going to inhale, kick into the hands and start to lift the chest, lift the tops of the thighs off of the mat. My weight is in the soft part of my belly. Try to keep the knees as close together as possible. Deep breath in. Big exhale. Good, one more inhale. And then exhale, left ear to the mat. Palms face up. I like to windshield wiper my legs side to side since it's a little bit more of a back bend. Feeling that lumbar spine release. Good. Gently release the feet down and come to a tabletop. We have one final sort of active heart opener here. So we're going to work into Ustrasana camel pose. I do have blocks at home. I know not all of us do. So again, if you're using an alternative like cans or my friend used white wine crates, <laughs> you can use that as well. Um, but another option to add a little bit of height from the ground up is to tuck your toes. So it brings your heels a little bit higher. If you're using the blocks, you'll have them by the feet. Now for Campbell, I want my knees about hips width distance apart. I'm going to bring my hands to the low back, either fingers face up or down. And I'm going to Lengthen my tailbone down towards the knees. And from here, I'm going to start to lift my heart up. I'm going to keep my hips over my knees the entire time. And then if I start to feel comfortable enough to maybe reach back, I'll reach right hand back and then left. So the blocks are my heels. Now notice my fingers are pointing back so that the chest is open. Same external rotation of the shoulders. And then if it feels okay, you can reach back for the heels. Now I personally don't usually drop my head all the way back because it makes me a little bit dizzy. And if that's you, then listen to that. You can keep the chin tucked. And find the breath.
Yeah, gently to come out. You're gonna start by bringing hands to low back and then use the core muscles to gently come out. And then have a seat on your heels. Good. So close your eyes, rest your palms on your thighs. And just find the breath. So the reason you might notice your heart rate has picked up is when we do deep back bends, we're compressing our adrenals just by our T7, the thoracic vertebrae. It's like a little dose of coffee. So see if you can slow it down here with the breath. We'll be here for about one more minute as we start to transition into our yin and restorative half of class. If you wanna take this into a yin stretch, you can tuck your toes and sit back on the heels. And this might be really intense. So you can have your hands forward, more weight in the hands. And again, if you have anything with elevation, you can lift the knees onto a block. That helps. And if it's your knees that feel pain and it's not the toes that feel the intense stretch, then put the block between your butt and your heels because that will take some of the flexion out of the knees. It will make a deeper toe stretch though. 30 more seconds here. See if you can take maybe only three full breaths to fill those 30 seconds. Five second inhale. And five second exhale. So start to feel the shoulders lifting towards the ears, just consciously let them relax. It all starts with cultivating that higher sense of awareness. And as we go into this practice, you might notice times where you actually do need to make an adjustment and that's intentional. Make adjustments as you need to modify if you ever get a signal from the body. But just start to differentiate between that and any sort of habitual movement that might happen in class. So gently, gently walk the hands forward. And I like to pitter patter out my feet here so you can just tap the feet out. Getting a little release. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and take Probably our most active yin stretch of class. I want to get it at the beginning so that we can move deeper and deeper into maybe even some restorative postures at the end. But in the spirit of heart opening, we are going to do puppy dog pose and we're only going to be in it for a minute. I'll show you the breakdown and then we'll start in a minute. So you might want your pillow for this, maybe not. I'll show you without the pillow first. So puppy dog. It's like child's pose, but you keep your hips above the knees. So rather than sitting back, hips stay over the knees and you're gonna walk the hands forward. Now from here, you might just let the head and neck release. You might let the forehead come onto the block if you have a block or something with some height. And you might even notice that your forehead comes all the way to the mat. I sometimes like to grab the top edge of the mat here. And then eventually, if your chest makes it all the way down to the mat, you can bring your chin to the mat and gaze forward. Just make sure that the chest is touching the mat before you take this gaze variation. Now, the 
pillow can be used in this if you want a little more support. So you can bring the pillow down, bring your chest onto the pillow. So you have that softer support than maybe a block and taking up more surface area on the body. Good. So we'll be here for a minute. So start to settle in. You don't need to go to your deepest the very first few seconds. We have the time here. We're gonna go deeper. Gravity and our breath will start to kick in. So don't find your edge right away. Deep breaths. Sometimes I like to imagine that my belly is trying to kiss the mat every time I breathe in. No one's looking, so trying to make the biggest bellies possible every breath you take. That oxygen circulating through the body. Halfway there. Feel free to stay longer if you feel like staying longer. But if you're ready to come out, you're going to very gently, gently, gently start to walk back. So every transition in this part of class is nice and slow, really easing in and out. And very small, awakened state here. And so Actually, let's just go ahead and take a child's pose here for a few minutes. You can keep your knees together or you can bring them a little bit wider if you want a little bit more of an arch in the back. But if you want more of a rounding to counteract that puppy dog, you can keep the knees together. You can have your palms by the side or outstretched long. If this bothers your knees, just put a pillow between your hips and your heels or lie on your back and draw the knees into the chest. Now in your child's pose, I want you to imagine sending the breath horizontally across the upper, middle and lower back every time you breathe. Starting to get into the liver and kidneys the hip flexors. So even as the body is still, the breath is very much fluid and helps you get into those deep myofascial connective tissues. In moments in the yin practice, we might enter our uncomfort zone. Rather than taking any big extremes there, we just gently work our way through it by deepening the breath. Slowly making the areas of uncomfort 
over time part of our comfort zone. Five to ten more breaths here. Letting the facial muscles be soft, the eyebrows, the sinuses, the jaw, the throat, the heart space and the belly. In this pedal class, you can always stay in any posture for as long as you want, even till the end of class if you like. I'll give the option to cue you out of them. If you're ready to move forward, you can gently start to round up. We're going to go ahead. We're going to cross your ankles, come to a seat. We're going to do Pashimottanasana. So we're going to extend the legs out long in front of us. And you might decide that you tend to tuck your tailbone here. So if you want to sit up on your pillow or a folded blanket or your mat, fold it at the end. Sometimes a little bit of height will help to tilt the tailbone back down so it's not tilting up. And from there, you can reach up and out to fold forward. Another option that I really love so that I can really relax into the stretch is putting a pillow on top of my thighs, maybe even two or three. So as many pillows as you have at home that you want to use, you can. We're gonna start by sitting up nice and tall. We'll take a deep breath in through the nose. But as you exhale, you're gonna reach out and forward. And then release down. Now, if you're not using the pillow and you decide you want to have your forearms resting on blocks or a block on your, or anything with height on your thighs to rest your head on, you can go for that as well. You can have your forehead down or gaze in one direction if that feels better. One thing my friend Alyssa said in her yin class the other day that I really loved is in this yin practice, we can sometimes step out of our bodies and just imagine that we're a fly on the wall. Just observing ourselves. I liked that analogy because the fly is not attached to what it observes. It's just a silent observer. Just notice where your mind takes you. And times where you feel at peace. And at times when you start to feel a little uncomfortable. Or any other emotions or sensations that arise. See if you can just be the silent observer without attaching to the storyline. When we gather all this information in, it now becomes a resource for us later on better understand ourselves, 
and it starts to integrate in the way that we make choices and where we proceed. I'm gonna be in this one for two or three more minutes, so just settle in. Maybe start to find that even inhale for a count of five. And exhale for a count of five. If you started gazing one way, maybe gaze the other way. Last minute here, if we want to take this deeper, we can remove any props. Otherwise, just keep them there. Gently, gently, if you're ready, start to come back up. We're just gonna do a little seated twist. So just bring your left hand outside the right shin or thigh, gaze over the right shoulder. And then we'll take the other direction, right hand outside the left shin or thigh and gaze over the left shoulder. When we're moving between deep forward folds or back bends, you always want to counteract them with a twist so that you can neutralize your spine. We're going to have one more front of the body opener in class today before we rinse it out with some deeper twists and hip openers. So our last sort of heart opening, front line of body opening posture is a little bit more of, or has the potential to be a little bit more of an intense posture for some people. So I'm gonna give you a lot of options and 
really listen to your body because we're going to be here for, you know, three minutes or so. So you want to make sure that you're set up so that you feel comfortable. We're going to take a uh, hero's pose and option for reclining hero's pose. If you have a blog at home, that's great. You can use your pillow as well as a modification. You're gonna keep your knees together touching. You're gonna lift your seat, and I like to roll my calves out of the way and bring my feet a little bit wider, maybe max this distance. And then with the calves rolled out of the way, I'm gonna sit back between my heels. Now right away, this might feel not right in your knees. If that's the case and you have blocks at home, I really recommend buying, especially for shelter in place. You can put a block underneath your sitting bones. Another option is taking a pillow between the ankles. Now, if you're sitting on a block, you're gonna to wanna to stay with the shoulders over the hips because you don't wanna compress the low back when you go backwards in space. If you have a pillow, then that's okay because it's the same height on your spine as your sitting bones. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna either stay here wherever you are or maybe you'll start to walk the hands back so that you're on your forearms. And if it feels okay, maybe come down to the shoulder blades. Finally, if you want, you can bring elbows overhead, just like we did in our lunges. You'll grab opposite elbows overhead. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the pillow variation. You can always start with the pillow or a block and then see how you feel halfway through. There's always room to go deeper, but you don't want to start at your deepest. Good. So we'll go ahead, I'll keep an eye on the time and gently walk back. And you still get all the benefits here. If you are sitting with your shoulders over your hips, because it's not just a stretch for the front line of the body. Uh, one of the benefits of this pose is, is that you are compressing the knee joint. You're intentionally loading there so that we're cutting off blood flow to the knee. And the knees aren't really vascularized. So what happens when we come out of this pose is all that fresh blood and oxygen comes back to the knee tissues. But it's harder for it to normally get there. And you get a lot of restorative and healing benefits. The one thing we don't want to do here is harm the knee. So just listen to the body. If you need to make any adjustments, such as maybe sliding your pillow a little further back, you can. Or maybe stacking two pillows to make a ramp. Like two more minutes. Find the breath. And if you start to feel any muscles of the upper body starting to tense up, to see if you can relax them. They don't need to be working here. Once again, just become that fly on the wall. Be a silent observer of yourself.
One more minute here. Come out of this, if you are reclined, you're gonna bring your elbows down first by your sides. And maybe grab onto your heels. Start to press the elbows down into the mat. And then bring your hands onto the mat. Very, very slowly, very, very gently coming out. And then bring your hands in front of you. Ooh, very, very, very gently coming out. And I like to, you can take a forward fold. I like to take a down dog. You just want to find a stretch that straightens through the legs. Like down dog, you get the stretch behind the back of the knees. You get all of that fresh blood flow back to the knee joint. And all the restorative benefits. If you want to paddle out your dog, you can. And then when you're ready, you can lower back down. You're gonna have your pillow, if you have a pillow, out to your left side, if you have a block or anything with a little height, so folded blanket out to your left side. You might not need it, but I like it. So we're gonna do a twist into a hip opener. We won't be in the twist for too long, but you might decide you wanna stay in the twist rather than take the half frog variation. So take what you need out of this but you'll have an option for both. So you'll start on your back with your pillow or prop out to your left side. You're gonna elongate the left leg and draw the right knee into the chest, just finding a little compression through the right hip flexor. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, you'll find Supta Madhya Andrasana, so keep on twist. You're gonna bring your Shin onto the blanket or pillow or block. Maybe it'll come all the way to the mat. So just adjust as you need to. We'll take five breaths here and I'll cue you into the hip opener if you want to take it there. You can stay here. If you're ready, gently start to roll over onto your left side. And just pause for a moment in a side lying child's pose so you can cradle your head, your bicep if you like. And in my yin yang classes at night, I like to throw in some restorative shapes so to prepare us for bed and a good night's sleep. So thinking of yin and yang as dualities more than sometimes a literal yin practice. If you wanna take this into half frog and get that um, hip opening, what you're gonna do is you're going to start to press the pillow 
or your shin out on the ground, out to the right, and roll all the way down onto your belly. You can create a little pillow for your head to rest on. If you feel any knee pain, you can flex your right foot or just let it be relaxed. We'll be here for about two minutes. Whatever variation you're in, whether it's the twist, the sideline, child's pose, or half frog. Whatever you decide, though, see if you can commit to that. See it all the way through. Stay here as long as you like. To come out, you're just going to gently wind back up and unravel the same way you came in. Going onto your back and extending the right leg out long. And you're just going to pop if you have your pillow over to the other side, whatever prop you're using. You'll go ahead and draw the left knee into the chest, finding some compression through the left hip flexor, lengthening out the right. Deep breath in. As you exhale, we'll take five deep breaths together in Supta Matsi and Jasana. Inhaling through the nose. And twisting and rinsing out through the mouth. to stay here we start to continue to roll onto the right side into a sideline child's pose maybe pausing for a moment to cradle your head with your bicep and if you want to take this into half frog and you did it on the other side just gently press the Pillow all the way out or slide your shin outwards on the ground and then roll onto your belly, resting your forehead and your hands.
And I should have mentioned this on the other side, but if you um, ever feel like the hip stretch is too much, you can always just slide the pillow underneath your body instead so that the knee is a little bit lower than the body. Maybe you even have bolsters at home. That's what our pillows are acting as tonight. Just a few more minutes here. We started class about five minutes late, so we'll take our final few minutes in this shape. See if you can settle in to this last posture before Shavasana. We're starting to empty out the mind of any final lingering thoughts. And inviting in the idea that sometimes it takes the right amount of detachment to connect deeper. Sometimes it takes the right amount of detachment to connect deeper. Maybe that's sort of the theme of shelter in place, right? Sometimes it really does take the right amount of unattachment, of withdrawal, to open up a whole new level of connection within ourselves and our lives. Go deeper. You can stay here a little bit longer if you like. You just start to unwind the same way you came in. I'm gonna set up for final shavasana. I like to let my hair out. And then you can either press any props out to the sides. I like to put blocks or if you have that pillow underneath my knees so that I feel a little support for my low back here and you can just let the palms rest face up by the sides and start to surrender everything starting with the physical body let every muscle And the toes all the way up to the crown of the head start to surrender and melt into the mat. And then as you start to feel the body let go, see if you can let the mind Start to soften as well. Allowing ourselves to not be so hard. And after practicing our breath for 
that 90 minutes, see if we can just let go of that too. Let it be its natural state. Let it exist even when we're not aware of it. Just let it go. And just cultivate a sense of trust. as you accept in a state of surrender. The final Shavasana. Please hang out in Shavasana for as long as you like this evening. I'm going to leave you here tonight. If you have any questions for me, you can always message me after class. Thank you all for being here together, for sharing this practice. Let me know if you want my playlist or if you want to know how to donate. Otherwise, just enjoy your peace for the rest of the evening. Namaste.